Hi there, Mr. Automation is back, and today again uh, with the jobs and multi-threading, uh, I'm going to explain when to use jobs and when not, because there are certainly situations where you don't want to use them, and there are situations where you do want to use them. Uh, I'm also going to explain and show you the speed differences on the low overhead jobs, for instance, and the speed difference on high overhead uh, jobs. So, for instance, a script that takes like a couple of minutes to run, or like a function that takes a couple of minutes to run that, uh, that installs a piece of software remotely or something. Uh, those are high overhead jobs and low overhead jobs are like uh, yeah, getting a registry value from a server, you know, that's a very short action, you know, that takes milliseconds most of the time. Um, and in the end, we have a free multi-threaded port scanner. Uh, I post the code, of course, uh, in the YouTube channel. So let me see. I go to my editor now and I go to the, uh, first I explain the script a little bit. This is the simple uh, port scanner. I will clear the screen by the way. So this is, uh, this, it's 20 lines, that's all. This is a simple port scanner. Uh, it reads context from the urls.txt. So I have a file here with some urls. Uh, it reads constants from a port.txt. That's inside of here, right? I have now two ports. Uh, we, we will extend that later. Um, then we have like the, the end result again to play with. That's just to store the result inside of this for each loop. And we measure the command here. We stick it in a time. And we loop through each of the servers in the text file. And then we call the scan me function. And that scan me function is this guy that accepts a computer name. And ports as input. And inside of that function, we loop through all the ports that you give us an input and then do a test connection. And then this basically, this command returns to here, right? So in the end result that comes there, right? Um, so without any further delay, I run this simple script. So on these URLs, these ports are run now a simple script. And I will remove the sleep for now. Let's see how long that takes. I'll open the view a little bit down here let's see I will clear it again we do once more we have like a fresh view so it's now reaching out to all the system 2.9 seconds single threaded okay keep that in mind 2.9 seconds remember that now we'll go to the multi-threaded uh, script it's exactly the same uh, script uh, I will remove the pause here as well so it's exactly the same script, reads the same URLs, the same ports, it loops uh, through the same uh, server array, only it starts a job, so that's the multi-threading part, and the job that, it, that runs a script block, and that script block is a function, and that function is scan me, right? Scan me, that's called here, and you call it like this, you can call a whole function as a script block. And then you can feed it arguments, so we have argument list server ports, see a comma, you see here? Uh, computer name ports you see that's the input for that function server ports and uh, when we started all the jobs we wait here in a loop until all the jobs are done and then when they are completed we remove the jobs and get the results and then uh, we calculate the time as well there so now we run the multi-threaded one against the same servers and the same ports See, it's 10 jobs, 9 jobs still running now. Okay, 8.3 seconds. So, let me open something here. Uh, I don't have the best drawing skills, and I need to share it as this as well, of course. So, let me do that. Uh, yes. So, imagine you ha here you have your script. That runs on a computer, of course, I have a server here, a server, a server. And here's my script. Now I have a lot, lot of lines in them. And uh, at some point you have like a loop, right? And here inside of this loop, you do a couple of actions. And uh, uh, for instance, you reach out and you get like a result back, right? And then you reach out again and you get sort of result back. And sometimes that reaching out can be another script or another function. Uh, it's not the best drawing skills, by the way. Uh, for instance, this is a function you're calling, right? And that can take some time. 
So for instance, this function takes uh, 10 seconds to run, right? You know that already, it takes 10 seconds to run. If you run that in a normal loop, so one by one, you know, one, two, three, server one, server two, server three, server four, it takes 10 seconds per server to complete. So we have like 100 servers, then it's 100 times 10 seconds. If you do it single threaded, right? I would take another color, we call it red. If you do multi-threading, you can start 100 at once, right? So those all reaching out at once and they all take 10 seconds still. And then they all return to the color 100, sort of at the same time. So then you do like, yeah, it's only one times 10 seconds or a little bit overhead, of course, for the starting of these threads and such. But then, then you get like a real speed difference. So what I showed you here in the example, I go back here. It was like uh, three seconds. Let, let me run that again. We have a nice clear overview again. You see, Th three seconds. And the multi-threaded one was slower. It was like eight seconds. We run that again, hang on. She's still 10 jobs running now, but at all at the same time, right? That's the difference. The other one was doing one by one by one, and now everybody's returning at the same time. And now we're at 8.4 seconds. But for instance, if we take this same script and we simulate a little bit what I told you, so that that action takes a little bit longer, and we do, for our example, two seconds in the multi-thread, and also in the normal loop, we do two seconds. So what that means in this picture, and I know it's, it's not perfect, uh, if you do like a single loop, you, you reach out and you wait and you get some result back and then again, and with this approach, you do them all at the same time, so to speak there, right? And now we sort of simulate this function that takes a little bit longer, right? It now takes only two seconds, uh, but imagine you have like a couple of functions calling there, you know, or imagine here goes your code. You have a running tux that takes minutes, perhaps, you know, you install some software but perhaps it takes five minutes. If you do that on 50 servers at the same time with multi-threading, it will still take five minutes, sort of speak. If you do it with non-multi-threading, just with the normal loop for each server in server, then uh, prepare yourself for some waiting times because it will be like uh, the amount of servers times five minutes you need to wait at least. And if there's an error, you can start over again. Uh, with multi-threading, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it just works uh, better on those uh, uh, long-during actions, so to speak. So let me run the, the normal one here. And perhaps I need to pause the video. No, it won't be that bad, I think. You have a two seconds timer. Uh, you see, two seconds between each now, you see? So for each URL we now do, we wait two seconds. So we have like a function that takes a little bit longer than like doing a ping. I paused the video a little bit, it took 43 seconds. And now we go to the multi-threaded one, same, uh, uh, sleep two seconds inside of it same URL so same port still and we run that Let's see still 10 jobs running still 10 jobs 10 jobs 9 jobs 8 And it's completed 12 seconds. So you see so that's that's where the multi-threading comes uh, comes into play sort of speak so let me see uh, jobs and multi-threading when or not to use jobs so don't use jobs if you have like a short action, you only want to get like information from a file or something. Don't use multi-threading for that. Uh, don't use multi-threading to get like the information of one service, you know, that's a lightweight action. But if you gather like a lot of information, eh, so uh, I've created uh, some other videos that you, that you gather more information from one system, that can take like uh, a minute or so to collect all the data. You can definitely do that with a job. You should do that with a job even. You have some multi-threading and in the end you capture still all the results and you can play with that. Uh, speed differences I showed you in high overhead and low overhead, you know, with the sleep and uh, we have a free multi Threaded port scanner now as well. Let me see if we can do some other stuff. Perhaps yeah, I thought perhaps it's nice to add a port or something. So we add a port that perhaps is not listening. So we do 445. I don't expect any of those guys here in this side of these URLs listening to SMB, right? Because that's the port of SMB. So we run the script again and like we remove the pause this time and we check how long it takes. This is the single threaded one. We start it now. Let's see how long it takes. 
still running by the way perhaps i explain this a little bit you never see the see me do this before uh this is getting the current working directory where the script is in and then inside of that i have url.txt and uh, ports.txt we use that inside of the script of course uh, for the loops so uh, just wanted to explain that it's still running thought as much 445 is not listening it takes a lot of time but exactly what i expected you know this is the single threaded approach we capture the total seconds in the end and then we do the multi-threaded as one we we'll see some difference there for sure okay there you go 208 seconds it took so that's 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 pretty steep it's pretty long uh, so let's look at the multi-threaded guy and we also check the results a little bit here i show that i pipe the results to grid view here i'll share that yes this is the result of the action this was the single uh, threaded one the multi-threaded will have the same i will size this up a little bit the multi-threaded one will have the same result by the way uh, but it will be a lot faster it won't take 208 seconds and it took a lot of time because we had timeouts now in the process we removed the sleep but still had timeouts so still simulating you know a long taking uh, process inside of that function and here you can see google is listening to 80 that's true 443 through and you know i teach you already you can filter here you know computer name add and then you're only interested in google for instance you see you have google and then for instance only if 445 the port you know uh remote port at uh 445 uh not less than equal but equals you see and then you have like only the results that you want to see of course you can do it with the where operator as well um yeah so you see we have all the results back it's not really demonstration for the port scan and it's more when or not to use uh jobs so we go back to the editor here the visual studio 208 seconds remember that and now we go to the multi-threaded one we start that one you see and that's running some jobs and those also have all timeouts of course but they have the timeout all at the same time you know they're all running now at the same time remotely you know they're all doing their stuff and they sort of will be completed at the same time you see there's already two ready still a couple of them running now it's calculating 41 seconds and versus 208 seconds so that's a huge difference and imagine sticking more urls in here and adding a lot of extra ports you know perhaps you want to scan more ports you know you stick in a whole bunch of ports and then the multi-threaded one will yeah basically pick them all at once and and do them all and just wait until they're all finished and then you still have the same end result i'll show that uh in a second now this is the end result you see that's still the same see the googles the microsofts which ports we scanned which was the remote ip address we scanned against uh if we had a tcp test succeeded you know we did a port scan there if it's true or false false is not listening true a uh, true is of course um so yeah that's the overview there let me go back once more perhaps a little bit explanation still i do the simple guy first so this is the function that does the test connection you know the port scanning uh this is the the server text the, the url text file this is the port text file uh this is an array where we store the results and this is just the time variable we use here right so we can calculate how much time uh, took place for that action we can you can completely remove that this is the for each loop for all the servers inside of the text file and inside of that loop we call that function here and we store the results inside of that array here on line 12 and this is that function you see and it accepts a computer name and port as input and we give that here right server ports and then inside of that function we loop through each of those ports and for each of those ports we set up a test connection and those results are, are then uh, are gathered all and then at the end we display that on line 21 to the end user if you go to the multi-threaded one it's a little bit more complicated exactly the same function by the way i left the sleep in so it should be a little bit faster even uh, if we rerun that but it's still it was 41 seconds that's fine uh, so the function is the same it accepts the same input this is also the same the servers and the ports the time also you know there's a capture the for each loop is also the same but inside of the for each loop we start a job and the job is still calling that function but what what that means is that they are all doing at the same time you know and in the end then 
if we started all those jobs, you know, we executed them all, then we need to wait. And that we do here in this while loop, we wait until all the jobs that are running are zero, false, so to speak. If this is empty, then this will exit, right? And then we go to the end result, we receive all the jobs, we remove all the jobs from memory, and we stick the end results to the screen, like I showed you on the grid view, and then we echo to the screen how long that took for the multi-threaded one. And let me go back to this one. Yeah, free multi-threaded port scanner uh, in the end. Um, uh, yeah, that was it. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next video. Bye-bye.